What is up, YouTubes? We are here to talk about Kaladesh Remastered, which is Wizards' second go-around, taking Kaladesh and Aether Revolt and smashing them together and giving us this new, tuned, better limited environment, allegedly, because I say that because I wasn't playing Magic when the first implementation came around. So if you're like me, hopefully this really helps you just wrap your head around everything that's happening. But if you're also coming back to it for the second time, this is your victory lap of it. I hope to make this an even more enjoyable experience playing Kaladesh, because I think the plane looks really fun. I think the set, this limited drafting environment seems like a ton of fun. If you're looking to jump into some drafts on MTG Arena, I hope this guide can help you have a better time, be more successful, all that good stuff. So let's just jump right into it. In this draft guide, I'm going to go over the mechanics, each color strengths and best commons, and then each archetype, and finally the combat tricks to be aware of. Then I'll probably ramble for a bit about how to approach drafting this set so you're ready to take on this artifact plane known as Kaladesh. Let's get into it. For mechanics, first we have energy. It's basically another resource you can use with some color pairs, archetypes leaning into it more than others. You most often gain energy counters from casting spells or when creatures ETB and can then use your energy for all kinds of wild and wonderful things like pumping up a creature or creating creature tokens. Vehicles are next. Kaladesh is an artifact plane, so essentially that means it's a massive car dealership. However, there is a lack of AI in these cars, so to drive them, you must tap creatures with power equal to the crew cost. Vehicles can be crewed by creatures with summoning sickness too, which I guess doesn't make a ton of sense. But hey, most people just fabricate artifacts to drive for them. Fabricate means when the creature ETBs, you can either have it enter with that many 1-1 counters or create that many 1-1 servo artifact creature tokens. Those tokens can help you crew vehicles or help you improvise other spells. Improvise is another mechanic where you can tap artifacts to pay one colorless mana for the spell. And yes, you can tap artifact creatures that have summoning sickness too for this. Last is Revolt. It makes your spells better if a permanent you control left the battlefield. Whether it was destroyed, exiled, bounced, whatever, all of it causes revoltings. And last, it's not so much a mechanic, but I just want to make sure you're aware that artifacts matter. There are a lot of artifact matter cards in the set. You should also main deck artifact removal in your deck if you drafted, especially in best of one. If you play artifact matter cards, also make sure you then play artifacts. So everyone set, we're good, great. And then you may also be thinking about, okay, there's fabricate happening, there's all these tokens being made, so how fast or aggro is this format? And OG Kaladesh, that limited environment was super aggressive. There's a lot of attacking, lots of combat tricks happening, blocking was really risky. So it often turned into a racing situation where people are just jumping in their vehicles and charging for that finish line. And if you're familiar with OG Kaladesh, you may remember Renegade Freighter, but that card is not in this remastered version. It is gone, but it's uncommon. Friend, the Untethered Express is still a hands down bomb in this format and one that I'm sure everyone's going to be grabbing early and often in a draft because it's just it's really good. But anyway, back to this new drafting environment. How fast or aggro is it? It's just not as aggro. Aggro can still work, it can still be rather good, it's just not quite as consistent as it used to be. And I appreciate that because it allows us to get deeper into the synergies in this set, which are pretty great. The synergies though, a lot of those payoffs are often found in the gold cards, and splashing in this set has been, I'd say, improved a little bit, or is more consistent. And the thing that I really like about this set is that splashing is more at the cost of tempo rather than the cards. A lot of the cards you play that fix your mana replace themselves, so the only investment you're making is really the time, which I think in limited is the better way to go about it than also costing you cards. You know what I mean? And splashing for those gold cards can often be a fantastic way to up the synergy in your deck, up the overall power level of it, so then you can just smash through your opponent's dreams of getting a seven or three win draft going. Point is the higher synergy game plan is better supported and something that I would recommend leaning into unless you really feeling aggressive and want to go that route. But anyway, let's jump into the individual colors so you know what cards to look out for to get your draft started. The strongest color in this set is surprisingly green. Both its creature and non-creature spells leave little to be desired, and you must be aware of the mythic uncommon Ridge Scale Tusker, which if you see it early on, you just have to take it. If it gets passed to you, green is probably wide open, and well, you should be pretty happy. Its top commons are Thriving Rhino. It's a card that scales pretty well and becomes difficult to block right away for your opponent. Pima Outrider, having Trample alone puts it above filler for me because of how many servo tokens are getting created, how easy it is for the board to get gummed up. Trample just brings a ton of value, and there's ways to pump it up in green to get in for damage. And then Hunt the Weak I have is the third best common, even though it's sorcery speed. But with an aggro set like this, hopefully you're aware of when a blowout is possible so you can play around it. And then pumping a creature and being able to remove another is just simply great. Although another shortcoming of it would be it doesn't deal great with vehicles, but eh, moving on. 
White is second. Again, it just has a lot of good cards. Every white color pairing in the set goes wide. But we also have some flying, which in the set is fantastic to fly over all the annoying servo tokens. Its top commons are Dawn Feather Eagle, because again, with white always wanting to go wide, you need something to actually make use of a wide board. So our Eagle friend here acts as a pump spell, as well as just being a really good creature that you're going to want in every white archetype you play. And then Glint Sleeve Artisan and Propeller Pioneer are those nice, efficient creatures that help us build out our board in the early game. Our middle of the road color in this Vehicles Abound set is red. It brings great removal and aggro creatures, with top commons being Welding Sparks because it can remove just about every creature in the format, Aether Chaser, having first strike can make this a pain to block all game long, and Chandra's Pyrohelix is a personal favorite card I want one copy of in every red deck because of its flexibility throughout the game. It's just really nice to have that option of hitting one or two different things. Then we're on to black, which no surprise has some pretty solid removal, but it's just weaker in this set than we've seen with more recent expansion sets, which I don't mind. I feel like there's more of a trade-off going on with Kaladesh Remastered, where the colors that have the best removal don't necessarily have the best creatures. Our top commons focus more around removal, like Daring Demolition. It's one way to also be able to take out a vehicle without it being crude. So yeah, it's again sorcery, but a fantastic removal spell. Aether Poisoner having Death Touch means it's always a relevant creature on the board. I don't know how often you'll actually attack with it, but the value it brings as a defensive deterrent puts it well above filler. And then Subtle Strike, like we saw in Zendikar Rising, can be a tremendous value play, and with how aggro and prevalent one toughness creatures are in the set, it's a great combat trick. And then yeah, to my amazement, I find blue to be the weakest solo color in the set. I wouldn't read into it too much because we aren't drafting monocolored decks, and blue still brings plenty of shenanigans to do just fine. However, it feels like the most support color, and its lack of removal leaves something to be desired, but it still has some pretty fantastic commons. Aether Swooper is nice because as long as we have energy, we can hopefully poke in for damage and keep creating servo tokens, which then help us improvise out our bigger spells. Gear Seeker Serpent is one of the best commons in the set and is just fantastic. Hopefully it only costs around 4 mana when you do cast it, making it extremely efficient and to pay off for those other artifacts you're playing. And then Aether Theorist is a good early blocker, it provides a solid chunk of energy and helps you smooth out your draws early and late game. Now with this set being so artifact focused too, Let's look at a couple artifacts to keep in mind. Prophetic Prism does work. It replaces itself, it fixes your mana, and it helps you improvise. That's potentially a ton of value depending on what archetype you're in. I just really like this card. And then Renegade Map can be great too. You probably just want to cut a land for it. You use it to fix your mana, you can improvise with it, whatever you need. I probably wouldn't play more than one though. And then Mobile Garrison fills in as one of the better common vehicles. It can be a pain to block while giving another creature essentially vigilance or untapping an artifact you may need to say improvise something out in your next main phase or combo with other cards like Pacification Array to move a blocker out of the way and then be untapped to control something on your opponent's turn. And then sure, why not? Some quick uncommons to know before you jump into a draft. Untethered Express is an absolute bomb in this set. I would pick it pack one, pick one over just about every common and a lot of the rares in the set. It's just really efficient and a very very strong card that also slots into just about every archetype as well and then deconcoction module and fabrication module both just bring a ton of value and can work again in most decks they give you maybe a mana sink for the late game or just bring enough value to get you ahead on board and close out a game don't undervalue any of these and yeah if you see them coming your way i'd probably pick them up so with that let's get into the archetypes with a quick disclaimer that they're all good i mean this set has been rebalanced to essentially make everything better for a limited environment and any archetype can get to those elusive seven wins in a best of one or three wins in a best of three so don't discount any of them let's jump into blue white it's flying fabricators you gum up the board with tokens and fly over for the win also blue doesn't bring much removal but hopefully its card draw can keep you finding answers and ways to close out a game white black is fabricate and revolt this archetype feels as dependent on any as getting revolt payoffs and those high synergy cards to be good but if you can get your board built out or have a card even like hidden stockpile, then you can easily trigger your revolt cards like Vengeful Rebel, and now you're really having some fun. White Red is go wide aggro, or it could be even go wide vehicles. As with all white archetypes, going wide is part of the game plan. And then what Red brings are those aggro creatures, as well as leaning a bit harder into the vehicle synergies. Use tokens to crew your vehicles if you need, or just have removal there to help deal with your opponent's blockers. As long as you can deal with servo tokens blocking you and not trade one for one with them, you should be good to go in this archetype. White green is 1-1 one -one counters and energy. This archetype can go either way, I should say, but you probably want to try and focus on one just to get as much synergy as you can out of it. If you dive into the energy game plan, you're probably playing more around your green spells and just trying to make some of your creatures as big as possible. If you dive a bit more into white, you're probably going wide and trying to put 1-1 one -one counters on everything. 
Either way, you want to make sure you have some removal, some interaction, and in this deck, I'm always happy to have some trample because board stalls happen, and nothing feels worse than that monster creature you built up all game just getting chump blocked over and over every turn by servo tokens. And then blue-black is improvising artifacts. If you're familiar with Tezzeret, like this is his archetype. We want a ton of artifacts that help us control the flow of the game early, and then eventually we improvise out huge spells. We can lean into lifelink too a bit, which helps us not get ran over in the early game, and eventually just overpower our opponent. This is probably one of the more creative archetypes in terms of finding a way to win, but it's also going to be one of, if not the slowest color pairs in the remastered set. Blue-red is assembling artifacts. You can have a similar game plan to blue-black of buying time to then improvise out bigger spells, but you may also lean into energy payoffs a bit more to help you build out your board, draw a ton of cards, and win through that massive card advantage. The uncommon gold cards are some of the strongest in the set and really add a lot of value to the archetype too, so that may be worth picking up early just in case you wind up playing these colors. Now blue-green is all about the energy. Most of your cards in the deck will either make or consume energy. So for blue, this means drawing cards and making tokens. For green, it means making monster creatures bigger and badder. A tune with Aether is also really good in this archetype, so you can splash in a bit easier. So don't shy away from splashing in cards like Harness Lightning or another archetype's gold card like Whirler Virtuoso to bring other energy matter cards into the fold. This is another archetype I just think looks like a ton of fun. Now black red is artifacts attack, and this color combo is also pretty aggressive, it can dive into vehicles to be cheap and evasive threats, or we can just push for artifacts and combat tricks to then improvise out bigger and better cards too. They don't necessarily need to drive the vehicles, but they can hit just as hard. I also like how much removal this color combo has, just make sure you have the top end that can get through board stalls. Now black green, some of you may be familiar with a few of these cards, because they were really good in standard for a while, but black green is still just 1-1 one, one counters. FYI, energy are also counters, so Winding Constrictor gives you even more value in this archetype. I really like this color combo because of how well black and green play off each other in this set. We have plenty of interaction to deal with bigger threats and should be able to eventually push through any board stall. However, this is also, I would say, the highest risk, highest reward archetype. Because if you lose those synergy pieces, you can really be struggling to do much. But if you do get the synergy pieces out and you get to keep them down, like say you play out Winding Constrictor and then play out Rich Scale Tusker, with any type of board state, your opponent's probably just going to scoop right there. Lastly, let's check in on red-green, which is unstoppable energy. It's a bit more aggressive than other archetypes like blue-green or black-green, and you can splash in a third color here as well if you do get some of that fixing, but it still plays around that same game plan we've seen for years now of red-green, which is just curve out well and be really aggressive and trample over for damage. Like, that's, that's kind of it. I like the archetype because it makes blocking harder for your opponent. With trample, just play a lower curve, grab some combat tricks, and charge ahead. Again, I think all the archetypes are solid and can be competitive, but here's my rankings of them in case you just want to get an idea of where I'd try to lean into if you have no idea what's happening. When drafting the set, I try to focus on grabbing high synergy cards. If there's not a clear, good, really strong monocolored card or one of those top commons or uncommons that you get familiar with, don't play it safe and just always grab a monocolored card. Grab the gold card, because if you end up in that game plan, you're probably going to want that card 99 out of 100 times and those are the decisions during a draft that help put your deck over the top. I also want to call out some combat tricks and interaction to keep in mind, because as much as I love walking into combat tricks and removal, it's not ideal if you want to win, and there's a lot to be aware of in the set. I won't bore you with going through every single spell, but here's all the one-cost spells that can ruin your day. Ally Evasion, Built to Last, Built to Smash, Precise Strike, Fatal Push, Select for Inspection, Looming Defense, and Ornamental Courage are all one-cost spells that can ruin your game plan. And those are just the one-drops. There's plenty more instant speed interaction in the set, but the point I want to make is that even having, even your opponent having one mana up can ruin your game plan. So you just got to be aware and hopefully taking that into consideration when you're attacking or being attacked or blocking, just so you can hopefully navigate that combat situation as best as possible. And if your opponent's attacking into you and it seems kind of strange, you should suspect shenanigans are afoot and just be on your toes. Another note, pacifism effects in this set are definitely what I would say second rate removal, certainly better than nothing, but you can your opponent can still get value from them, whether it's the artifact improvised type strategies or maybe they can still tap it to crew a vehicle, or in this set, there's just a ton of flickering. If nothing else, that's another good reason to play Decoction Module because if your opponent's relying on their pacifism effects and you can bounce your stuff, play it out, there's also a ton of ETB stuff in this set. So flickering things and then getting even more value from getting to play it again, 
is probably going to be something that's pretty commonly relied on across multiple archetypes, especially with Fabricate in the set. So my game plan when drafting is I do want to be ready for that aggro game plan and just be able to buy my time to get my higher synergy plays on the board. So that means I'm playing or shooting for at least, let's say, five two drops and five or six three drops. I want that early curve of mine to be just consistent to allow me to get early plays down and then find either my gold cards or my bombs or if I was lucky enough to get some nice rares or mythics to get to those, get them out and then really take over a game. Also, when I am drafting, unless there is that kind of obvious rare or mythic staring me in the face, I'm grabbing gold cards way earlier than I normally would because they are just such high synergy plays. And if I can find a couple pieces of mana fixing, then I'm golden and I don't mind. That's did not mean for that pun to pop in there but it's just gonna really help my deck feel, I think one more fun to play and to have a higher power level. But yeah, that's gonna do it for me though. Let me know if you have any questions. I really do appreciate you watching. Subscribe too. I'm gonna be putting a lot of drafts up of this set now that I got some time. And I hope this video helps you in your drafts. Let me know how your drafts are going or if you're playing sealed events, whatever you're doing. Love to know how that's treating you, if MTG Arena's being nice to you and all that good stuff. And yeah, just thank you to my patrons. Thank you to Card Kingdom for sponsoring the channel. Thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Take it easy. Peace. How's quarantine haircut number three coming up? I think I did all right. Yeah? All right. Yeah, we'll take it.